Hello and welcome to Euphoria. This channel explores designing, creating and building models for a LEGO city. We will be exploring the joys and challenges of building official LEGO sets and designing and making modifications and my own creations. In this video I'm going to build the LEGO Harry Potter Whomping Willow Castle set. I'll be building just the castle part of this set. The set really has three parts, which are the castle, which is part of Hogwarts school, a blue car and the Whomping Willow tree, all from the Harry Potter book and film. I found this part set on eBay and it's perfect because it contains the castle building but none of the parts I don't want from this set. I don't need the car, the figures or the tree for what I'm going to do with this set. This video will show you a speed build of most of the set and I'll give you my thoughts on the design and use of parts. As usual for my builds I've laid the parts out before starting so that I'm familiar with the elements used for the build. They do come in individually numbered bags but here I've opened all the bags and laid the parts out first. This is called knolling, and if you want to find out more about it, see my videos on this topic. There's a link in the card above and in the description below. The castle build contains a useful selection of parts that I want to use in another build. That will be a mock, my own creation, for my LEGO city. I'll be designing and building that later in another video. But first, I'll be building this set to get used to the parts and how they fit together. There are lots of interesting and useful parts in this set if you like making buildings. They're largely building type parts in useful realistic colours like brick yellow or tan, sand yellow or dark tan, greys and browns. Obviously, if you want to make something else like a green dinosaur out of this set, you're going to struggle. But for what I want to do, it's perfect. I will also be building this set in a LEGO computer-aided design program so that I have a digital build that I can use in my mock design later. See you later on in this video for details of how I do that. The castle is built in four parts that clip together using Technic bricks and pins. There's a tower, an arch and two rooms that fit either side. I'm going to follow the LEGO instructions and start by building this tower. So, let's start the build. So we're going to start with what was bag 3 in the original set and that makes this two-storey tower here with the conical roof which is only really half a roof. So there's no real base plate for this set. Instead, all the individual parts are built on their own building plates. Um, some of which are funny shapes, like this one. You know, that makes it quite hard to use later in a modular environment. But it does give you flexibility about the way that the different parts of the build are laid out when they're put together. So there's quite a few types of angled piece in this set. These are all 45 degree angles and actually it's quite hard to make corners in Lego that are at an angle. So these pieces fit quite well with these corner pieces that are going to be used quite extensively in this build for making the towers. And you see the first of these corner pieces being used here and here to enable you to get an angled edge to the build. Here's quite a clever technique where this small plate is attached to this larger plate at a 45 degree angle. That gives you 
some nice shapes and an interesting building technique but it only works where this plate is sitting on a flat surface so for example if you wanted to try and build this on a base plate you wouldn't be able to do that because this just doesn't connect on. So this is a clever technique but it would be hard to use for a modular building where the building is going to be built onto a base plate. So this bit of detail here just shows how it's possible to connect two 45 degree plates together using these bricks and it maintains the alignment of the anti-studs underneath. So actually, these do fit onto, or would fit onto um, other bricks or plates underneath. Now we come to the first use of these panels. They're a three by three panel at a 45 degree angle and they have this arrangement at the top where there are two studs that allow you to connect a brick and still join onto the top of the panel like this. You can see how it fits really well onto this one by three by three angled brick, although it does leave these two connector holes here, but uh, those two align really well, and that's a common usage of these two bricks together. If I just turn this round now, you can start to see how the corner piece fits in and starts to bind with the ordinary bricks, leaving this 45 degree corner at the top to be bridged later. I like the way this column and these half arches and this corner piece form a support for this corner of this tower or turret and this is a technique that I might look at using in some of my own creations. So here again you've got the interesting technique where a corner or an angled piece is attached at an angle which completes this corner quite well, gives you this kind of internal angle, but it does mean that these studs are not aligned with these studs. So you couldn't, for example, put something across the two and get them to join up because they're just not aligned. The other thing I'm not sure about using those these parts is that there's quite a big hole here in this corner. Now, that will probably be covered over to some extent by the next level up, but I don't like this rounded join here because it leaves such a big gap. I'm not sure I'd want to use that technique directly. So here you can see what happens when the next layer is put on with another one of these 1x3x3 corner bricks. It's masked fairly well, it does fit on, but there is still a bit of a gap at this layer here. So here again, 
There's a repeat of the technique with the column, two open arches and the corner piece to create this shape of the turret. Now here's quite a clever technique. By using this circular piece and this semicircular piece, the corner of this building can be fitted at a 45 degree angle on this turntable. There isn't much movement there. And that gives you a really nice effect on this corner where the roof is going to go. Although we've still got these gaps around the corner, which are rather obvious. Now we come to the roof. The roof on this model is a conical roof made up of this main cone piece and this cone piece which is also half a cone but has a stud on top. There is another half cone with this set but you'll see that actually when you put them together they don't come together at a point they come together at two studs. So although this model has a final cone on the top, like that, if you made a full conical roof for this building, you'd have to have two finials on the top. Nevertheless, I think this is quite a nice piece to use. So what I would do if I was making my own creation from this is to make two half cones like this and join them together with one of these one by two pieces, perhaps in a darker color. And then I'd have, in effect, I'd still have two finials on the top to finish the roof off like so or maybe just have one and fill this part in with something else like another small piece like this so this set is topped off with a cone and this finial piece in sand green and that's quite a good sort of pinnacle for the top of an old-fashioned building. And I think that's something that I would use in one of my own creations as well. There's another small spire on this build, made up of a couple of round pieces. And this 2x2 two two cone. And on this one, they've used this kind of spear piece as a nice finial which goes well with the cone and that's another nice way to finish off perhaps a older looking building with this spire effect. So that's the first part of this build finished, this three storey tower with these open sides and a conical roof which is positioned at an angle and it looks great from this side as well with the little spire on the side that's uh, quite effective but I think if I was going to build this into my own creation I would try and fill this out this part of the building fill it out more and probably have um, a complete roof made out of two lots of these cones so that it becomes a complete kind of spire on the top of the tower.
So there's nothing particularly special about this archway. It could be an archway into a city maybe. Um, it's got the road tracks here which are quite good and it's slightly asymmetrical so it's not quite the same on each side. That gives it a little bit of character, gives it a feeling of perhaps being a bit old. And here it's got the Technic brick 1x2 with two holes which can be used to connect it to other parts of this build using the Technic pins like this. But unfortunately that's not the same as the Technic brick 1x2 with one hole which the modular buildings use. So unless you change all your modular buildings to use this brick um, or change this build to use this brick they're not going to be compatible with connecting to a modular building. So here again you can see that although this looks quite good from the front it's actually a doll's house style building. This turret is only half a turret and there's nothing really at the back here. So it's a shame that it's only designed to look good from one side. However, this is where you do see one of the nice features of this set because by using these Technic pins, you can connect this part to this part just by plugging them together. And there you have quite a nice model, which you can change the configuration if you want to. So now we're going to build two of these smaller rooms on the side, um, on these octagonal base plates. I quite like the way this is all randomly presented. It looks like it's old, it's perhaps been around a while and modified. And each of these little room units are done differently, so you get the impression of something that's been around for a long time. And I think this is where these corner pieces uh, really come into their own. They fit onto here really nicely to make this octagonal design. Now we get into the use of these half arch pieces that are quite nice and they make this kind of open arch effect which could be quite useful for builds in the future. So now we use these 3 by 3 corner pieces to bridge across the corner of these panels. And they fit perfectly really with that part so that works really well. Although this construction works fairly well with this 3x3 three three corner piece and the 3x3 three three corner plate on the top, there is a slight lack of binding across these corners. So I think really it needs something else up here to bind it. If you were going to continue this construction further upwards, you would certainly need something to give it some additional strength. So with the use of these pieces across here, you do finally get some binding across the join, so it's strengthened slightly. So now this turret room can fit onto the main part of the build using these Technic pins, like this. And now you can adjust the position slightly if you want, because there's a hinge brick here. 
So from this side, you can see all the open back of the buildings. And from the other side, you get a kind of diorama of the outside of the castle. So the build of this second room is very similar to the build of the first room. It has the same arch design and very similar outside appearance. So this second turret room fits onto the main part of the build in the same way using these Technic pins. And again, it gives a pleasing effect of the overall build when it's connected together. Both from the back and from the front. I'm also going to build this set in LDD, that's Lego Digital Designer, so that I have a digital build that I can use as part of the design for a mock later. This is how I've laid out the parts before starting the build. I happen to have laid them out in the same way as the physical layout, but that's just for this video. Laying out the parts is called knolling, and it has a number of benefits that I describe in my other videos about sorting out and laying out parts prior to a build. I see that LDD doesn't yet have a part for the plant plate with three leaves, part number 32607, or for the half cone-shaped roof piece 35563. So you might ask why I'm using LDD. That's because it's relatively quick and easy to use, but it is a bit annoying that LEGO doesn't support its own program with its own parts. There are other computer-aided design or CAD programs for LEGO. For example, Studio, or Stud IO, is a LEGO CAD program produced by Bricklink, and it's a good alternative to LDD. I do also use Studio. Perhaps surprisingly, it has a much larger selection of parts than LDD, including the missing types from this set. However, I find the very large selection of parts slower to navigate, and so for this video, I'm using LDD. Now that Bricklink has been bought by LEGO, it will be interesting to see what they do with the LDD and Studio programs whether they combine them or somehow keep both going. You might also notice that I'm using the advanced view in LDD. In this view, all the parts in the parts menu appear red, but you can then choose any color for the parts. I find this quicker than scrolling through every color of every part in the normal view to find the one that I want. But if you want to make a physical build using real bricks, of a model designed in this way, you have to be sure to use colours in the design that are actually available. I'm not going to show you the whole build process, I'll just show you the start of the build so you can see how it works. You can see that it's easy to pick the parts and place them together in exactly the same way as the physical build. Here's the tower built in LDD. And here I've done the same for the other parts of the build. It's also relatively easy to import from an LDD design into Studio. Some of the parts don't translate very well and Studio shows them as wireframes when it has an issue. But most of the model comes across fine, and it's fairly easy to replace those parts that do have a problem. I hope that LEGO makes this process a bit smoother now that they own Bricklink. 
In a later video, I should be able to show you importing this set into another build to make a mock. So that's my exploration of building the Whomping Willow Castle. In my opinion, it's a nice looking set, both from the front and the back. The nice thing about the use of the octagonal plates is that they form very good freestanding bases for the octagonal tower and rooms, and they allow you to connect the various elements of this set in different configurations. I think if you were going to make this set into something else, perhaps something larger, you'd probably want to construct this on a larger base plate rather than a set of separate building plates. This castle build contains a useful selection of parts that I want to use in another build. Building this set has given me a useful insight into how these parts fit together and some ideas about how to use them in a mock. What do you think about this set? What would you do with it? Please let me know in the comments below. Look out for another video in which I will be designing and building a mock using the parts from this set. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos about LEGO modular buildings.